in our spiritual walk with Christ. You see, we, we know we're saved. We know we have been born again. We know that there's a God in heaven that loves us. But when problems strike, and oh dear friend, they will strike. The book of Job tells us that, more, that man is born a few days and full of trouble. Difficulties are going to happen. We'll say yes. We we know we're saved. We're we're on our way to heaven. But then, when trouble strikes and discontent, discontentment fills our soul, and we say, "What are we going to do?" I've got an issue in my life. I've got a problem in my life. I've got a trouble in my soul. And then we question God. And we declare and we say, God, are you not there? God, where are you in my trouble? God, where are you in my strife? God, where are you in my problems? Before we're, 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 we're walking on the mountaintop, we're experiencing life as its finest. But then the bottom drops out and we begin to question our walk with Christ. We begin to question it. We say, what is going on in my life? I'm not happy as I once was. My life is not filled with the joy that I have had in the past. I have not experienced that peace that passes all understanding for such a long time. You see, dear friend, today the problem is not with God. So, see, God has never left us. Amen. Once you became a child of God, Amen. He promised that He would never leave us nor forsake Amen. us. Amen. That He's always going to be here for us. Amen. The problem's not with Him. The problem is with me. Amen. The problem is with I. The problem is that I've walked away from Him. Amen. I've turned my back on Him. Amen. I have, I'm not experiencing my peace. I'm not experiencing my joy. I'm not experiencing my blessings because I have walked away from Him. Amen. In this discontent, Paul describes for us on how to be content. Paul gives us a, a great illustration. Paul gives us a, a road map on how to experience joy. Amen. How to experience peace. How to experience the blessings from God. He says in verse number 24, For all the promises of God in Him are yea, and in Him amen, unto the glory of God by us. Verse 21, Now He which establish us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. The word established there is our English word to establish. The word establish, if you go and look it up in a Webster's Dictionary, literally means to be firm, to be planted, to be unmovable, to be put into place. And what it means, he says, this God who hath anointed us has also established us. I am so glad for the day, oh happy 
happy day, oh happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. I, I was on that road to hell. I was down in the miry pit of clay. But Jesus, He came along and He picked me up and established me and placed me on the solid rock. Amen. Established. He put me on a firm foundation. I'm getting excited and I just started. But guess what? He got to the point of where he says the only the, the way the Greek actually reads is the way that he establishes us is because he had anointed us. I want to talk a couple minutes, first of all, on the anointing. The anointing. You see, when someone gets anointed in biblical days, when they got anointed, they would take the vessel of oil, Brother Dave, and they would bring it up. And there they would pour it onto the head. Just like that. That feel like oil. Yeah. All right. They would take it, and there they would pour it onto the head. And as the oil would run down, and as the oil would get down onto their body and onto their limbs, it would nourish their skin. It would nourish their bones. It would give them a fresh fragrance. You see, anointing oil had different spices in it. It had a little bit of myrrh in it. It had these different spices in it. And when they, they had a little bit of frankincense mixed in there with it, it gave off a beautiful fragrance. It gave off a, a sweet smelling odor. And as they would pour it onto their heads, it would run down and with oil on their face, all upon their beard, all upon their upon their body and on their skin, they would walk around, and there would be a fresh anointing on their body. Amen. The anointing showed that they had been set apart. They would also anoint prophets, priests. And kings. And as they would anoint them, they said, This person has been set apart. They are experiencing a communication with the divine, King of kings and Lord of lords. And he says, Hey, this person has been set apart. There's something special about them. We're talking about the anointing. Notice that I said there was a fragrance. There was a glow. There was a shine on somebody that had been anointed. We're talking about how are we going to make it through the hard times? How are we going to make it through the difficult times? How are we going to... Hey, when the lightning strikes and the flood and the thunder rolls, what are we going to do? He says, you have... He anointed. We're talking about there's something different about the child of God. Amen. When somebody was anointed with oil, it didn't take very long when he was amongst his friends, when he was amongst his family, until he under till everybody around him knew there was something different about that person. Amen. 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 Hey, that all had a specific sin. When they were, granny, when they were, when they were there around the people, somebody could, could smell there was something different about the person. Sorry about that, Brother Steve. About the person that was there that had been anointed. They could look on their face and say, there's something different. There's something different about him. There's something different. I'll tell you what, there was something different about me the day Jesus.